Secretary Lauren Zana. Thank you, sir, for hosting my first visit to the Philippines Secretary of Defense. It's great to be here with you today. This morning, I had the opportunity to visit the United States Secretary of Manila to pay respect to the 17,000 brave Americans who lost their lives fighting in the Philippines during World War II. The service members laid to rest in that cemetery serve as a reminder that all we have sacrificed together to enable the security and prosperity that we enjoy today. The alliance between the United States and the Philippines is deep-rooted and founded in our shared history and common values. Our alliance remains strong, and it continues to adapt to meet the challenges of the future. Today, I reiterated the United States' commitment to the 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty, which applies to the entire Pacific region, including the South China Sea. It is crucial that we stand together to preserve freedom of navigation and overflight and other lawful uses of the sea. The United States rejects attempts by any nation to use coercion or intimidation to advance its national interests at the expense of others. We must continue to work closely together to uphold the international rules-based order that has enabled our shared security and prosperity for the past 70 years. Counterterrorism cooperation remains an important pillar of our defense relationship. Operation Pacific Eagle in the Philippines continues to successfully counter ISIS affiliates and other violent extremist organizations threatening the Philippines. We stand shoulder to shoulder with the armed forces of the Philippines fighting terrorism. The United States remains committed to supporting the Philippines' continued efforts to deny terrorist groups a safe haven in the region. Secretary Lorenzana and I discussed a number of other areas to strengthen our defense cooperation. The United States will continue to support initiatives to help modernize the Philippines' armed forces and to improve maritime security and civilian awareness. We look forward to planning future joint air and maritime patrols to improve our interoperability and to demonstrate our commitment to upholding the long-standing international rules and norms. We also discussed opportunities to enhance our joint military exercises, to strengthen cybersecurity awareness, and to improve defense infrastructure through further implementation of the enhanced defense cooperation agreement. Overall, I'm very pleased with the outcome of today's meeting. Our alliance with the Philippines is absolutely vital to the security and stability of the Indo-Pacific, which is far far from the region. I'm confident that as we continue to work closely together, we will meet the challenges of the future and preserve the game that both our nations have worked so hard to achieve. Thank you. The Philippines and the U.S. have shared a long history of planning for a number of years in France, but the challenge. In those years, cooperation was spanned in the areas of the South China and social cultural relations. And our advice, including that in our defense management, have continued to grow stronger. While the overall bilateral relations between our countries with some setbacks, which are normal in any partnership. Our defense relations have proven to be during the years. Let me therefore express my appreciation to Dr. Mara Um, sir, one, uh, Secretary, one of the 
criticisms of the Philippine and U.S. Uh, Mutual Defense Treaty has been always the ambiguity of some provisions that trigger military response, particularly in the definition of what constitutes the Metropolitan Philippines and the exact nature of conflict that strict, uh, triggers the MVP response from the United States. Uh, there has even been talks of revising the MVP to reflect these new concerns under the current administration. So, has there been progress in revising the MDP, or do you think it's still necessary to revise the MDP at this point? Thank you. I was up front, 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 I so we are actually in a discussion with the special members about the lot of also. And uh, I think uh, one of these uh in the good to uh, look at these things from time to time, to review and to clarify and strengthen them based on changes in the environment and the situation. And clearly, as uh, some of you may know, the United States uh, adopted a new national defense strategy last year. That reflects our assessment that we are now in an era of great power competition, and it requires us to look at the world differently and to uh, 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 build different capabilities and reposition ourselves and to emphasize the importance of this theater, the Indo Pacific theater. So I think for all those reasons, it's good to do so. And I think the fact that we are such strong and capable allies and there's such a great friendship between our militaries and our peoples that uh, this is something we do together. And uh, I, I look forward to meeting with you. Next is um, hello, good afternoon. I'm Larry Esper. Um, in recent months, China's aggressive actions in South China Sea, including incidents in Mandarin Reef, where you found and supporting China, have sparked alarm. So, what's the red line? Uh, or what actions will wire U.S. intervention in these kinds of cases? Is there anything new that the, that the U.S. can offer apart from bonus? And in relation to that, since the signing of the 2014 Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement, what has been the status of the projects, and do you see the need to accelerate implementation? I would start by saying that the, uh, the Secretary and I just came back from Bangkok, where we had a very important meeting of the ASEAN and Indian and Plus members, if you will. And the, the, general, the general theme that I took from our formal plenary discussion is that most participants in that group are very concerned about China's excessive, excessive claims in the region, that their uh, lack of compliance with international laws and norms, and they're concerned about the coercive tactics used by Beijing throughout the region to advance their own interests. Uh, I've just spoke about this in my opening remarks today. So I think that it's incumbent upon all of us to uh, take a very public posture and to assert our sovereign rights and to emphasize the importance of law. That's why the United States conducts uh, freedom of navigation operations. And I think the statistic that I cited yesterday that we have conducted more freedom of navigation operations in the past year or so than we did have in the previous 20 plus years. And, uh, and so have other countries, by the way, because the clear signal we're trying to set is not that we oppose China per se, but that we all stand for international rules and international laws, and that we think China should abide by them as well, and that uh, acting collectively is the best way to send that message and to get China on the right path. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, any last question will come from Mr. Glenn Carey of Bloomberg. Good afternoon, Secretary. Today's been a busy day. Uh, cost burden sharing talks in South Korea have been canceled and was announced from Seoul and they cited a large increase in new additional terms. While North Korea has publicly rejected